Hey, good morning, everybody. Chief Meteorologist Brian Penovich. Beautiful start to the day. In fact, I don't expect much of any bad weather during the day today as temperatures could get close to the low 80s. The big question mark is tonight as we track another round of severe weather. And even though I do think there are ingredients there for severe weather, this is going to be a lot less widespread than Tuesday, especially in the Carolinas. So I am somewhat cautiously optimistic that this might not be as big a threat as even what we saw yesterday and I'll explain why so here's the setup today I'll loop this a couple of times and you can kind of see what's going on we've got this big storm back to the west it's moving in but there's not a lot going on to our south that's interesting today because this basically pseudo warm front is going to start drifting back to the north and that's going to be a big focus of how much warm humid air gets in here and I think a lot does but a lot of the guidance or the modeling if you might hear it referred to um, shows the ingredients there, but not a lot of storms developing. The storms that could get going, though, could potentially um, be severe. In fact, supercells are a pretty high probability. I'll turn on the uh, severe weather outlook today, and you can see how the alignment is. It's definitely a much higher risk to our west and southwest, much lower over the Carolinas, but certainly the western Carolinas today, and really tonight, have a higher risk than even what we saw yesterday. So those are the areas we're kind of watching. Let me look at the tornado probabilities. You can see, again, we're in the 2% in green, 5% in brown. The highlighted area today seems to be down here in southern Georgia, South Carolina, Savannah, Albany, Macon area um, for possible tornadic activity. Now, this front continues east tomorrow, so you do see that low to medium risk shift to the coast because it's all about this front pushing to the east. So this is going to be the big player. It doesn't get here until the wee hours of the morning and then tomorrow it's right there. So let's take a look at some of the short range guidance on what could be happening later tonight and we'll kind of get the timing of this all down. All right, so a lot to watch today on how things unfold. Here we are at 9 a.m., not a lot going on. In fact, it should be really warm today. I think during the daylight, it should be like, right, what severe weather, what rain? There really will be not a lot going on during the day today. So we'll go through time. I'm gonna go into the afternoon hours. Stop this about three o'clock. Here's where things get a little interesting, not for us, but with the system. So we clearly got the cold front right here, but you see what's going on down here? That's where that heightened tornado risk is and where the higher risk of severe is. Notice the storms are really scattered, but in here, these are isolated cells. The potential that some of these could be supercellular, which are rotating storms, is definitely elevated. So while there's not a ton of them, the chances of them rotating are pretty significant. So we'll go into four or five o'clock. Not a lot going on in the Carolinas, but you see a bigger cluster developing to our south. Now, why is that important for us? I've seen this happen before, and this is a distinct possibility. These storms develop and block some of the better fuel or moisture for storms in the Carolinas. They can't get up here, and the line is really doing all the action. So this could deter. This thing right here could really deter some of the activity over the Carolinas. So we'll have to keep an eye on that. But by eight o'clock, I do see some cells trying to develop around the Carolinas. So we have to watch. So if you're looking for a time frame, we need to really start paying attention. It's seven, eight, nine o'clock now, which seems weird. It's after sunset, probably not gonna matter because of the amount of forcing. So you see this, not impressive looking. It looks way more impressive to the South, but don't get caught up in the bright colors. I had someone ask, bright colors mean severe weather. Not all the time. They mean heavy rain or hail. In this case, I'm looking at the, the, the look of the cells. Like, are they small? Are they kidney bean shape? Are they linear like this thing coming through the Knoxville area? That's really more what I'm watching for because you could see there's individual cells in there and especially back here um, to the west around 10 p.m. This is where I think if we're going to see severe weather, it's going to be this stuff right here. This is 11 o'clock. We go towards midnight. And again, you could see this is, it looks like a line, but there's actually embedded in here, you can see some individual cells um, kind of developing there. So to me, this is the time I'm watching right here, late this evening, starting maybe 8 p.m. until the overnight hours. You can see the front pushing to the east into the wee hours of the morning, four or five. I mean, some of these could still be strong, though that's a better time of the day because we lose some of that heating. And then it pushes off to the east during the day tomorrow. And you can see maybe some regeneration and why we have that risk in eastern North Carolina. So let's take a look at some of those parameters um, real quickly. I'm going to pull up um, the significant tornado parameter. I'm going to look at this real quickly because it is fascinating to watch how this unfolds. So that's what it looks like today. We'll go through time. I'll stop this this afternoon. You see some of this tornado parameter building to the south. 
And as we go into the evening, six, seven o'clock, we'll get close to eight o'clock. So it is eight o'clock. You see to our west and our south. So there's some energy there starting around eight o'clock, nine o'clock, 10, 11, 12. Overnight, look at this. That overnight, midnight, 1 a.m., 2 a.m., there is some energy there. So unfortunately, while the risk isn't widespread, this could link, leak into the overnight hours. So it's a really good idea that you have a couple different ways to get warnings. Because then we go through tomorrow, that threat shifts off to the east. So again, the overall threat with this is, is low for our area, but it's not zero. And the biggest concern with this system is the storms that do get going will likely be severe, even though maybe the overall chance of rain today is 40, 50% mainly this evening, maybe 15% of those could become severe and the tornado risk is between two and 5%. So supercells are what you never wanna see. Those are the worst storms um, because they tend to produce the big hail, um, damaging winds and obviously tornado threat there. Hail and wind is always a big threat with supercells. They don't always produce tornadoes, but um, it definitely the wind and tornado threat is something you watch for with supercells. I do not like seeing supercells developing on any of these products, but that's what we have. They're isolated, which means some of us won't see anything at all, but overnight tonight, that's the time frame. So let's go back here, starting really eight o'clock, nine o'clock and after is where things get active. So I'll stay on it today, this afternoon, but the good news is during the day today, no worries. The worries will really start to happen after dinner time tonight. That's the time frame you need to be weather aware. And of course, we'll have you covered online, on air, and on social.